Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been watching the news last week, uh, here in the Puget Sound region, it was a bad and violent week, especially in the cannabis industry, because we had not one, not two, but three separate violent incidents. And there is a significant increase in violent crime towards those in the cannabis industry. So today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about how can Washington's cannabis stores protect themselves? Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's how we're going to make sure that we're getting our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, like mentioned at the outset of this video, last week was a particularly violent week in the Puget Sound region, especially within the cannabis industry. On Wednesday, in Factoria, just outside of Bellevue, we had three young men attempt an armed robbery of a cannabis store there in Factoria. Uh, they were successful at robbing the place. They were led down on a high-speed pursuit with law enforcement in chase. Uh, they did get as far as Seattle, where two of them did surrender. However, the third robber did get involved in a shootout with law enforcement. He, of course, lost that shootout and succumbed to his injuries. He was fatally shot by law enforcement. Now, on Thursday, we had an incident out in Covington, out southeast of Kent there in King County, in which a person attempted to rob a cannabis store out there. He started by actually accosting a customer in the parking lot, putting them in a headlock, holding a gun to their head, dragging them back inside the cannabis store where they were encountered by security. Uh, he was attempting to rob the cannabis store. That robber was shot and killed, and we'll talk about that in greater detail in a moment. Then Saturday, uh, a very unfortunate situation occurred in Tacoma. There was an armed robbery of a cannabis store in Tacoma, and one of the employees of that store was shot and killed by the robber. The robber is still at large. Now, some of you may be asking, what does this have to do with Washington gun law? Well, it has a lot to do with Washington gun laws. It has a lot to do with federal gun laws. First of all, we have a significant increase in crime, property crime, and violent crime here in the Puget Sound region simply because we are no longer enforcing some of our laws as we should be by certain jurisdictions who have either shown an unwillingness to enforce their laws or an inability or unwillingness to properly fund their police departments. Couple that with the fact that we have antiquated federal law, which still has cannabis on the same schedule as heroin, methamphetamine, and some of your other more serious street drugs. And that means that federal banking regulations forbid banks from doing business with most of Washington's cannabis stores, and therefore they have become, in large part, a cash-only business. Well, we take the combination of those two things, and then we add to it Washington's law and its applicability, because what cannabis stores in many ways are, are soft targets. Now, what exactly is a soft target? Well, a soft target is something which is particularly vulnerable to attack. What makes a Washington State cannabis store a soft target? Well, it's the application of RCW 9.41.300, because as we know, 941.300 restricts several areas that we cannot carry firearms, including courthouses, correctional facilities, licensed uh, mental health facilities, to name a few. But one of the other areas listed in there is any place that the LCB, the Liquor and Cannabis Control Board, has designated as age 21 and over. In fact, the section that I'm referring to is RCW 9.41.300 subsection 1D, which reads as follows. It is unlawful for any person to enter the following places when he or she knowingly possesses or knowingly has under his or her control a weapon. D that portion of an establishment classified by the State Liquor and Cannabis Board as off-limits to persons under 21 years of age. And so, yes, for all of us who want to visit a cannabis store and carry our firearms, and I recognize that there is all sorts of federal complications with this whole scenario. Yes, we've already done a video on that. We're not going to get too far off the course. But no, 
normal, regular citizens cannot walk into a cannabis store while possessing a firearm, just like normal, regular citizens could not walk into schools while possessing a firearm under RCW 941-280. And that is what makes it a soft target, because when these armed robbers go into a place where they know that nobody can be lawfully armed, they do not have to worry about getting into a shootout or encountering their use of lethal force with somebody else's use of lawful lethal force against them. But here's what I want everyone in this industry to understand. You see, because when we take a look at RCW 9.41.300, the statute as a whole, as we do here, we so frequently focus on this section right here, which, yes, does restrict normal, regular citizens from visiting a store, a cannabis store, for legitimate business purposes while possessing a firearm. So you, the lawful and responsible gun owner, cannot walk into a place just like you could not walk into one of the old state-run liquor stores possessing a firearm because those were designated for age 21 and over. Just like when you're in a bar and a restaurant that happens to have a cocktail lounge, if you're in the restaurant portion of it, there's nothing unlawful about that. But if you want to go into the cocktail lounge, the firearm cannot come with you if you want to continue to be the lawful and responsible gun owner. But here's the thing. Even though this section of the statute buried deep in here restricts, restricts folks like you and me from possessing a firearm, it does not restrict the employees of the store from doing so because we have another section buried way down here in 941-300 which actually states the following. Subsection 1D of this section does not apply to the proprietor of the premises or his or her employees while engaged in their employment. So, under 941-300 subsection 11, while there are restrictions for all of us to carry a firearm into a cannabis store, a cocktail lounge, a bar, a tavern, those restrictions do not apply to the owner of the premise or any of his employees. So, why is this important? Well, if you work in one of these industries, the reality of the situation is these are high-risk in industries in which, yes, you do assume a certain amount of risk by going to work every day. Owners of these companies have the right to designate individuals to conceal, carry, and to be armed security on those premises. And the important reason is, is because this actually works. Because when we look at the incident that occurred on Thursday out in Covington, and we read the story as to what occurred, what occurred here is the robber accosted a customer in the parking lot, put him in a headlock, put a gun to their head, and marched them back into the store. When that robber came into the store, still holding that customer in a headlock, and announced to the security guy working the door that this was a robbery, the security guard drew his weapon and fatally shot him. That security guard is not in violation of 941-300 because under 941-300 subsection 11, he was designated to be in that capacity, armed for that reason, and to do exactly what was needed if it was in fact needed. And candidly, this person is a hero. Listen, if you are in the cannabis industry, this is what I'm telling you, is you have a large cash business. There is a tremendous amount of liability that you are assuming, and there is a tremendous amount of risk that each and every one of your employees assumes every day that they come to work there. You have a responsibility to provide a safe working environment. And in this time, with what we are currently living in, especially in some parts of this state, I do believe it is advisable for you to consult with armed security uh, companies, licensed, bonded, and insured reputable, well-trained, well-manned, licensed armed security companies to protect yourself, your employees, and most importantly, your customers. Listen, you may have more questions about arming yourself when we're engaged in this industry or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, and if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. 
and stay safe. Hey everyone, just wanted to remind you that Washington Gun Law is going live again Monday, April 4th at 7 p.m. right here on YouTube. I'm sure we will have plenty to talk about. So join us live Monday, April 4th, 7 p.m. That's Pacific Time right here on YouTube. Bring your thoughts, bring your ideas, bring your questions. Most importantly, bring yourself Monday, April 4th, 7 p.m. Until then, stay safe.